Hey guys, it's Liar here, and in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys the complete guide to the Titan subclass. Before I say anything, I want to give a quick thank you to my friend Avaloka for uh, making the thumbnail for me. I was busy in school and stuff. I had little time for editing and making videos. Big thanks to him. Now, the way I'm going to be ordering this video is that I'm going to be talking about best Titan gear for each subclass and the best loadouts. Then after, I'm going to be listing my top tips for you guys to use in Crucible. Now, one thing I will say is that this is how I use Titan. From all of my time playing Destiny throughout the launch till now, I've made a Titan. And I think it's safe to say that I have mastered the Titan class. So hopefully I can help you guys out in this guide. And then before we start this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to show support to my channel. And I'd be sure to make more of these videos. In my last guide video, you guys found that pretty helpful, so I decided to make another one. And hopefully this one is just as helpful for those who want to improve in Crucible. Besides that, let's get on with this video. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the best weapons for the Titan. So, the best weapons are basically the weapons that are good for any subclass. It's not like some weapons are better for Titan, some weapons are better for Warlocks. All weapons feel the same for every subclass. That is, unless there is a certain uh, exotic that helps out that certain weapon. For example, uh, Peacekeepers over here. Peacekeepers will help out submachine guns, so submachine guns are really good paired off with Peacekeepers. So you'd best be using a uh, adjudicator or anti obd if you have one. And for the Actium War Rig, you would use an auto rifle because the perks based off auto rifles, mainly the Uriel's Gift, uh, and even the Sweet Business. If you want to know what the best uh, weapons are for PvP and what the best exotics are, I might make videos on that myself in the future to come. So make sure to stay tuned in that if I ever do make them. I'm planning on making a top five best Titan exotics video, so make sure to look out for that. And there are a lot of weapons to choose from for Crucible because there's so many good weapons out there, a lot of variety. The main weapons are probably anti OD, Uriel's Gift, and Last Hope. Anyway, let's go over specific subclasses for the Titan. Uh, first I'm going to start with Sunbreaker, and the super is Hammer of Soul, which is from Destiny 1. You use hammers and throw hammers at people. It's, it's got Thermite Nades, Incineronary Nades, and Fusion Nades. I personally prefer Thermite Nades because Incineronary Nades and Fusion Grenades were both nerfed badly from Destiny 1. A lot of people don't see them as a threat, but they do a lot of damage when you least expect it. Thermite Nades are like a wave where uh, if you get hit by the wave, it can almost one-shot you. And they're, they're pretty hard to notice because they're in a small area, but they're still an area of effect the grenade. So it hits outside of the area, so some people just walk into the nades and they just die. I forgot to mention this, but I'm going to be going over the barricades and the movement modes later. So, subclasses now have two perk trees where you can't change up the perks as you want to. So you have to pick one specific perk tree. And what I use is Code of the Siege Breaker, which is the bottom perk tree. Just because uh, I really like sunspots, and sunspots are really useful in this game. For this perk tree, there's a perk where when you stand on a sunspot, you can throw hammers faster and basically what this means is that you can throw more hammers so usually you can throw up to like four or five hammers but in a sunspot you can throw up to maybe 10 which is pretty cool and you really useful basically this whole perk tree works around sunspots meleeing people get sunspots meleeing people does area of effect damage and these are all from destiny 1 again and i found these really helpful in destiny 1 i use most of these perks but the top perk tree is also really good as well. It's got, it's got a shoulder charge like ability hammer strike. It gives hammers uh, a bigger area of effect because it shatters the explosive after impact. Like cluster bomb on impact. Enemies killed by hammers will explode which gives it more of an area of effect. Just in case the hammer doesn't hit them. Use the bottom perk you might have to be direct with them. But overall I prefer the siege breaker. Next up we have sentinel where it has suppressor nades, void wall nades and magnetic nades. I personally prefer special nades because magnetic nades or any sick nades in general aren't as good as they were in Destiny 1. Wood wall nades are pretty good, but I personally just use special nades because they're more useful in my opinion. They can take people out of supers. Uh, the super is where you get a shield and you can throw it at people and charge them with it. The shield is a one hit kill if they're really close to you, but if they're far away it's not going to one shot them. Uh, it also has the ability to use Ward of Dawn if you use the top perk tree which is really helpful for teammates. This whole perk tree in general is really good for teammates and, and since Crucible is basically all about teamwork, it's extremely helpful. Uh, melee kills also restore health for you and your nearby allies. Uh, killing an enemy gives you an overshield for you and your allies. So it's basically, like I said, a teammate perk tree. But I personally prefer the bottom perk tree because I'm mainly a solo player for Crucible. I don't enjoy playing as a team. So the reason why I use this is mainly because of the second shield. It gives you additional shield throw. And I really enjoy using the shield throw, and I feel like shield throw is really effective. And because it doesn't one-shot kill them, uh, it's good to have another shield throw to recharge it. So last but not least, let's get on with Striker, where the super is Fist of Havoc, just like Destiny 1. You slam the area, just like Destiny 1, but in this time, it's mobile super. For the grenades, it's got flashbang, pulse nades, and lightning nades. But personally, I use pulse nades and sometimes flashbang grenades. 
Uh, flashbang grenades are really underrated, and they're pretty helpful because it blinds people for a long time. But in my opinion, pulse grenades are just too good, just because of how much damage they do. As I'm sure you've noticed, a lot of pulse grenades in the Crucible these days. Uh, it basically just kills people instantly. Speaking of pulse grenades, I would use the Code of the Earthshaker uh, perk tree, just because of magnitude, where it gives you an additional grenade charge and increases the duration of grenade effects. And paired out with pulse grenades is... I don't want to say OP, but it's pretty darn good. Although I personally hate the idea of spamming nades like this. Nexus has a perk where Fizzle Havoc uh, leaves of damage dealing field wherever you slam. Uh, it's got Sesamic Strike where it has basically shoulder charge ability. Uh, shoulder charge is pretty underrated even though it's not that effective. And I'll talk about a good technique for shoulder charge later on. Then it has Aftershocks which is pretty good because it charges your grenade when you shoulder charge someone. And this is extremely good paired out with Magnitude because Pulse Nades basically just combo it up with Pulse Nades and just spam Pulse Nades all day. And this picture is mainly for zoning and keeping enemies away from certain areas. Uh, the bottom perk tree is still pretty good as well, uh, but it's the top perk tree is just so good just because of magnitude, so I prefer the top one. Now I'm going to talk about what's the best subclass to use. So which subclass do I think is the best? Uh, there is no best subclass. These subclasses, in my opinion, are all extremely good, and I prefer all of them. Each subclass has an advantage over the other in some way. Uh, for some breaker, it's the hammer's pretty good. For Sentinel, it's pretty well-rounded. Sentinel, uh, it's got a variety of combinations to use. You can either use Word of Dawn and Trials, maybe. Uh, block off the bomb. If you want to see that in action, go check out uh, Destiny Fun Police. I'm sure they have a lot of clips for you to see. And Striker, because Pulse Nades and the Super, it's kind of easy to dodge sometimes. It's because uh, people can run away from you, and people can just jump really high over your smash. But if you just shoulder charge them when you're in Fist of Havoc, you can just kill them while they're in the air. So you gotta learn how to use it effectively. One thing to note is that all these supers are mobile supers, so they all move around while using the super, unless you use Word of Dawn for Sentinel. Now I'm going to talk about the best Titan gear for each subclass. I have almost all of them. Uh, I might be missing one or two, but I have the majority of them. So let's go down and start all the helmets first. Mask of the Quiet One is mainly a Sentinel uh, armor piece. And this helmet is actually glitched where your own teammates can trigger this perk. Where uh, it grants you additional abilities and it recharges your abilities faster. Hopefully it gets fixed soon. If you guys remember uh, Destiny 1 Trials where uh, there's an artifact called Artifact of Timmer. Uh, I think it was called Artifact of Timmer. But... Uh, it gave you increased super when near nearby teammates. And this is basically that, except uh, this is an unintended perk. So hopefully it gets fixed. Even with it being glitch, it's still a pretty good uh, exotic. Next up we have Hellfang Pauldron. Probably my favorite exotic armor piece in the game. And basically what this does is shield bash melee kills recharge your shield, melee kills recharge your sentinel super. And it basically has a chain effect. So this paired up with this, the bottom perk tree of sentinel is extremely good just because you can spam the shield to basically get it after every kill. And it's very useful. Next up we have the synthol steps and these are pretty popular exotic just because it increases the melee range. I'm personally gonna say that this is pretty overrated exotic. Just because melees aren't that strong and it's pretty hard to tell where the range is. So it takes a little time getting used to it. But I also will say that the accuracy with this exotic feels a little lackluster because sometimes when I'm using the melee it doesn't hit people or reach where they are so it's a little bit inconsistent. But once you get the hang of it I'm sure it'll be really helpful. Next up we have Crystal Valve Lupi which is another exotic from Dust Study 1 and in Dust Study 1 this exotic was extremely helpful and here it is again and it's still extremely helpful. What it does is basically it generates additional orbs of light from supers and heals you when you activate a barricade. You can use that barricade for self-defense and it will heal you. So when the enemy tries to rush you you won't be low on health and you'll be able to fight back using your shield. Next up we have the Antium Warbig, and this exotic is pretty good, but the only downside it's only for auto rifles. But there are some really good auto rifles, uh, I'm sure you've noticed the Uriel's Gift in Crucible. So uh, if you can pair it up with this, and even the, uh, I don't have it on this character, but the Sweet Business is pretty good for it. Also have the Hollow Fire Heart, which is for Hammer of Soul. Now this exotic is pretty good, it charges your solar abilities while your super is full. And even though you have to hold up to your super, this is a pretty good neutral game because you can use your grenades, uh, you can use your uh, shield abilities more. The next exotic is extremely good as well, uh, Peacekeepers. This is extremely good just because uh, some weapons like anti OBD or Adjudicator are extremely good in the Crucible right now. Say you have an Adjudicator on and then you have some sort of Skull Rifle or Pulse Rifle. So let's use Uriel's Gift for example. So say you run out of bullets at your Adjudicator have someone close, you can switch your weapons, shoot him with this, damage him, Uriel's Gift, maybe one or two seconds 
you can switch back your weapon and it will be fully reloaded so that is extremely good especially since the cooldown is extremely low just make sure not to switch your weapons instantly because it probably will not reload and that's it for exotics so the next part of this video is going to be me listing my top tips and tricks for crucible now these tips are extremely helpful and some of them are pretty good tactics so i highly recommend you use them anyway to start it first i want to say what i use for the class ability is towering barricade and i rarely use rallying barricade just because i prefer having large cover like a block off areas just because that's what titans do even in the story of destiny titans were meant for hold the line make sure no one passes them they're made off the block off area just like the how what they did in the tower they put walls up if you don't know the lore make sure to check out Mylan games he has some videos on that rally barricade is still good don't get me wrong but for cover wise people can just jump above and get a sideline of you easily with uh towering barricade you can barely shoot the enemy. For rally barricade, there's a technique where you can uh, crouch shoot and never run out of ammo. But I personally don't find ammo a problem when I play Crucible. I'm always like regularly reloading my weapon. And I don't prefer crouching while I'm shooting because it throws off my aim as well. Because for my controller and the way I play the game, I use a regular controller and default settings. So uh, for crouching, it's going to be circle. And I don't want to keep pressing circle while I'm shooting. I can't really control my aim. I'm going to have to put my aim straight down and use a weapon that shoots only vertically, not horizontally, or it's going to throw off my aim even more. I like being accurate with my shots. Another thing to mention is that for both barricades, uh, if someone walks into your barricade, they get damaged slightly. And no matter what you do, it won't kill them, even if they stand in there forever. But it will get them to where they have no health left and all you need is to tickle them with a shot of damage. Using shields in this way can be extremely helpful and in some cases you can use your tiring mirror kit against the wall and where the enemy has to push you if they want to kill you or you can just slip away. And if they do push you, you can just shoot them because they will be damaged when they come through that wall. They're going to be weakened and you're going to have that advantage. So that's tip number one. Next up is going to be tip number two where I'm going to be talking about movement. Uh, for best movement, you should use the strafe jump. Or the strafe lift you should note that uh titan scanning isn't a thing anymore because they nerfed the strafe lift to where you can't titan scan anymore or move fast but it still moves decently fast and it can be used if you practice enough with it uh personally i practice a lot with it and i personally pair it up with uh the lion rampant and what i found best to, for the titan skating to go as fast as possible use your jump once then the second you start going downwards use your second boost all the way and glide like that so it feels just like you're titan skating so it's best to make sure you're moving horizontally instead of vertically and then this way you won't move vertically at all only horizontally tip number three should be the brawler titans are meant for punching stuff and it's evident in a lot of the perks there's a technique for solo charge or any type of charge for any subclass on titan where you can shoulder charge someone and then melee them and that will kill the enemy no matter how much health they have so make sure whenever you shoulder charge someone make sure you play it off with a melee melees are really weak of their own in fact i don't actually like the way melees are in this game since they feel pointless sometimes but if you pair them up they're extremely useful so the last tip for this video a uh, tip number four Use recovery and resilience. And mobility is almost useless. I feel as though mobility isn't really useful at all, to me at least, but mobility can't help with strafing. In Destiny 1, Titans weren't meant for strafing or having any mobility since Titans could Titan skate with ease. In this game, there's, like I said, there's no such thing as Titan skating and you can't really move that fast like you could as Destiny 1. But resilience and recovery is extremely important in this game, mainly recovery, just because the higher the recovery, the better it is for you. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys found it helpful. Make sure to like, subscribe if you did, and I appreciate it. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.